All right. Hello, everybody. I uh, hope that you're all uh, safe and, and healthy at home and um, going to get used to this uh, alternative form of delivery for our classes. So we're all going to be more or less learning this together. So hopefully you find this uh, to work okay and, and get the information across. Um, so before I kind of go into the, the actual uh, notes here, uh, just a few ideas about how to most effectively use what I'm going to be posting. So I'm I'm going to kind of follow as close as I can what we've done in class so far, which is I'll have sort of a rough outline of lecture notes, which you see here. And then when I would be typically writing on the board, um, I will write on the PDF. So uh, if I can pull this off here, I can can mark up and write on, on the PDF of the lecture slides uh, as if I was writing on the board. So I'll try to fill in the blanks as we go along. What I would recommend is that you take notes as we go through this uh, lecture. Now I'm, I'm going to leave these lectures available online um, on both, you know, you should be have the, a link to YouTube on Canvas for these and they'll be on YouTube as well. I'll leave those up through the end of the semester, so you can always go back and, and look at what I've done. Um, but I'm, generally speaking, not going to post the marked up version of the notes. Uh, now, the reason I'm doing that is so that it gives you some incentive to actually try and, and take notes as if you were, were viewing this information in class. And that's going to be a huge benefit uh, to you learning this material, is to write it down and process it as we go along. So the, the best way, most efficient way that I know to use these notes is in that is in that regard. Um, so, with that said, uh, we'll kind of jump into our material here. And so we have, uh, as I do typically, I have a, a set of learning objectives that you know there's too much information here to uh, even fit on the slide. Um, but you want to at the end of each chapter, you want to look back at those and, and make sure that you're comfortable with each of those learning objectives and can do the things that they're asking you to do. So we're going to start off, and this is, turns out this is very timely uh, that we're going to talk about this. We're going to dive into the labor market pretty seriously. And so we're going to think about what makes people employed, what makes them unemployed. We'll look at some statistics. How do we calculate unemployment rates, uh, employment rates, and those types of statistics that we're seeing reported on now um, and that's obviously going to be a really important topic so most people as i as i have here written in the slides are really defined by their jobs now right now most of you are not defined by your job uh, you're probably working part-time if you're working at all and it's just to make ends meet once you graduate so if you talk to your parents your parents friends grandparents and ask them when it boils down to it, they're really defined by their jobs. So who they think of themselves, how they define themselves as people, has a lot to do with their employment. And so what that means is that if I lose my job, so if you look at what we have currently going on as a result of all this coronavirus uh, chaos, is that a lot of people are going to become unemployed in the next month. So already there's been something around three to four million new unemployment insurance claims filed in the past week. So that's at least three million people that have lost their jobs in the past week. And we only had six million people unemployed total. So that's already a big jump in unemployment. It's only gonna get larger as the month goes on and, and possibly beyond that. So we have this big group of people that are gonna lose their jobs. And in addition to losing your income, from the job, which is costly enough, it also costs you a big part of your identity. And so that has long lasting psychological effects in addition to economic ones. And so we wanna to try to figure out what exactly is gonna happen. So what is the effect of this coronavirus gonna be on employment and how can we model that? And we'll try to figure out what, if anything, that the government can do or the Federal Reserve can do to make that better. So we've heard a lot about things that the Federal Reserve Bank has been doing. Who are they? What do they do? The government just passed this huge $2 trillion stimulus bill. And so we want to try to understand what exactly the effect of those, of those actions are going to be 
on the economy. So what can the government do? And sort of asking the question, will this $2 trillion stimulus make any difference and how? And so in that sense, uh, this is a really good time to be covering this topic and a good time to be in an economics class because we'll have a, a great ability to understand this information when we get through this section. So this was just a, a little introduction to introduce the topic and we'll, we'll get rolling into looking at some statistics uh, next.